Hello everybody, my name is Joshua and I'd like to welcome you back to another episode of Coffee, Cats and King where we will discuss books, both new and old and I will share with you pictures of my cats who will make you wish they were your cats and I will drink enough coffee for me and everybody watching. My mug today is one of those awful, gaudy, wonderful mugs that I found at uh, Goodwill a while back. My shirt, it's my X-Files shirt. <clears throat> and the video today is my September wrap-up. Now, I realize that we are essentially halfway into the month already, so I'm just a teensy bit behind on that, but that's okay. Uh, last month I read 13 books. Now, last month was interesting in that uh, I had my lovely wife pick my TBR for me. Um, I say that she actually ended up picking about half my TBR. There were a couple books that I read before, uh, before she, you know, did her picking, and then other books that I read on my Kindle that uh, I didn't have her pick. So uh, it was a very interesting month. What you'll see as we're going through is that all the books she picked for me, with the exception of one, all got four, four and a half, five stars, whereas the ones that I picked for myself tended to be a little lower. So, I don't know, maybe that tells me that uh, I need to have her more involved in the future picking my DVRs for me. Apparently she knows my taste better than I do. So, without further ado, let's get into it. The very first book that I read in the month of September was Collected Science Fiction Short Stories by Raymond Flex. Uh, this was not a pick by my wife, obviously. I read this before uh, she got involved. In fact, the first couple of books on this list were before she got involved. But this short story collection from Raymond Flex, uh, it, was, it was okay. There were some really good stories in there. There were some very poor stories in there. Uh, the main issue that I had was Say it with me, guys. Editing. Yeah, editing. It's an independent publication, and it shows. So uh, I gave it two and a half stars at the end of the day. Decent. Um, I got it for free, so it was still worth it for me. It's definitely on the lighter side of science fiction, so it can be enjoyed by people who uh, don't want to get bogged down uh, with the science in their fiction. Uh, the first physical book that I read in the month was Stephen King's Bag of Bones. And this is one that is not talked about very often by Mr. King. Uh, it ended up being a four-star read for me. I previously read it probably a good 15 years back, so I hardly remembered it. So to give you a brief synopsis, this is about a man who loses his wife, uh, and shortly thereafter, he has this sudden urge, this need almost, to, to uh, go back to their vacation home. And when he does, he starts learning all these things that, that he didn't know about her. Uh, these things that don't make sense, they don't add up. And he starts wondering how well he really knew this woman that uh, he called his wife. There are a lot of really horrific elements. Uh, I think it's a really good Stephen King book. Um, it was a four star for me because... I think because of the relationship between the man and his wife. She's dead for the whole thing, you know, but there's flashbacks in that. And really what it comes off as is I love this woman because she is a sexual object to me. And that... That really threw a wrench in it for me in this regard because the whole story revolves around his relationship with his dead wife. So for their entire relationship to seemingly be based on sex, uh, it just, it, it fell flat in that regard. But otherwise, as with any Stephen King, uh, especially older Stephen King, he packs a lot of scares in there, uh, some really creepy scenes, and it's a very enjoyable read. And following that, I read another Kindle book. This is one that I wanted a Goodreads giveaway. This is Dream Diaries by Becca Smith. I was very excited about this one. It's about a girl who has dreams of murders. 
uh, and shortly after dreaming this, the murders occur. Uh, well, one morning she wakes up from this horrible dream where she was in the killer's mind as he killed her neighbor. And surely enough, her neighbor is dead. So, it sounded very intriguing. And then it just completely lost me in that uh, this girl is supposed to be 17 years old. She meets a boy, uh, they get in a relationship, you know, the first day that they meet, basically, and start dating. It's her first boyfriend, it's her first kiss, and within a week, uh, they're having sex. And, again, it just felt so unreal to me, you know. This girl's 17 years old, she's never had a boyfriend, and a week into her first relationship, they're, you know, they're getting it on in the parking lot, it just... It fell flat, and so the whole romance aspect uh, did not work for me, and that was big because this book actually has a lot to do with that romance. So, two and a half stars. It just wasn't the right read for me. A lot of people are loving this book. It's getting a lot of five-star reviews, so maybe it was just me. All right, now a book that I definitely want to talk about, but I'm not going to talk much about it here today, is Richard Chismar's Chasing the Boogeyman. Now, in the next couple of days, you're going to see my review of this book. Uh, so I'm not going to say anything about it at the moment. Just be on the lookout for that review. All right, here we go. We are getting into the books that my wife picked for me. The first one was the only book that just did not end up working out for me. That was William C. Dietz with Bones of Empire. This is supposed to be a military science fiction. Um, really, it's more of a police procedural science fiction, I guess. So there are some interesting elements uh, in that, you know, they'll go to a planet and they are, uh, they are busting a new type of pickpocket who uh, turns out to be this living plant that can pop up out of the ground, grab something from someone and go back into the ground, or, you know, so strange things like that. It was interesting in that regard. Uh, but the story itself just didn't work for me. Uh, the two main characters are this big-time soldier and his slave. Uh, and his slave happens to be his lover. They have this, uh, this relationship that is supposed to be this incredible relationship. And he keeps telling her from the very start of the book, I'm going to set you free so that we can get married. I'm going to set you free so we can get married. And it is not until the last page of the book and yeah, it's a spoiler, but whatever. Last page of the book, this guy finally decides, you know what? Uh, you've almost died like 4,000 times in the course of this book for me, so now I'm going to set you free and marry you. And it's supposed to be this, this heartfelt moment, and uh, it's just, it's BS. So, two and a half stars for me. It had some interesting elements, but no. Past this point, everything else that I read was at least four stars. So... Let's get into the good stuff. All right, Lloyd Alexander, The Black Cauldron. Now, I also just talked about how uh, one of my lovely subscribers, Troy, sent me the full set of this book series. So I will definitely be reading that soon. But uh, for this month, I read just The Black Cauldron, which is book two of five, and it got five stars from me. I think it would be a great starting fantasy series for a teenager or a younger person. I think it's a great fantasy series for an adult, especially if you're just starting out in fantasy. It's, uh, it's humorous, there's action, um, it's not crazy and over the top in regards to gore and violence and sex and language and everything, so it can be enjoyed by any age group in my opinion, and uh, just great stuff. Really great stuff. Okay, <clears throat> after that, I read Esther Forbes with Johnny Tremaine. Johnny Tremaine ended up being four stars for me. Uh, definitely a very enjoyable classic, if you have not read it. Uh, it is about a boy who... It's about a boy who is a silversmith, and... Uh, one day this horrible accident occurs and he burns his hand all up. Uh, it's just a mangled, awful mess. He can't use it anymore. And from there, 
uh, Johnny's life really takes a very interesting turn. Now this all occurs during a period of the time that was uh, filled with turmoil both for the British and for the Americans. So I think you know what I'm talking about from there. Uh, it is a historical fiction of course but very much enjoyable uh, and not read by enough people I think. So if you have not read Johnny Tremaine, maybe give it a try. All right, now this one you guys did just see my review of, that is Cameron Chaney's Autumn Crow. And if you have not seen that review, I will link it somewhere up above here. Uh, this was a five-star read for me. Excellent, excellent collection of short stories there, all revolving around Autumn Crow Valley. And it made me very excited for Cameron's upcoming book, uh, which is based on Autumn Crow High. So, really looking forward to that. Uh, again, Cameron is one of our own, so we got to support our own. Uh, and on top of that, it's just a really great book. And I will say it is probably going to join the list of my October reads from here on out. All right, this one was a four-star science fiction read for me. That is Frederick Pohl's The Coming of the Quantum Cats. Now, I'll get this out of the way. There's no cats in this book, guys. And uh, I know that makes you sad. It made me sad, you know? Um, the cats in this book are people who are referred to as cats. Uh, and it stands for something. I'm not going to try and say what it stands for because I'll get all tongue-tied. But essentially it's people who have uh, either accidentally or purposefully been shifted to an alternate reality. And that is what this book is all about. So, I said the first science fiction that I had on this list was uh, kind of soft science fiction. Coming in Quantum Cats is in no way soft science fiction. This is a lot of science involved in that fiction. So. If you are easily confused or lost in a book, that is not the one for you because in this book, uh, you have about 10 different realities going on, 10 different timelines and streams of life going on all at once. You're jumping back and forth between them and it gets crazy. That said, if you can stick with it, it's a really, really enjoyable read. Uh, four stars, at the end of the day. Would have been five if it got a cat, but... Uh... No cats. What a shame. Next one my wife did not pick out for me. Uh, this was another of my Goodreads wins. This is The Body Scout by Lincoln Michelle. This was a four and a half star read for me. It's another science fiction. Uh, this is more of a cyberpunk. It's all about this man. He is a scout for Major League Baseball. And in this particular future, uh, baseball is huge it means everything because the pharmaceutical companies own each of the teams and the whole point is for them to show off their new drugs and their new enhancements through their teams so the winning team gets all sorts of uh, government grants they get uh, particular pardons from the president to be able to do experiments that other people can't do uh, so you want to win in baseball and his brother, his adopted brother, is a major force to be reckoned with in the league. Well, one day during a game, he kind of just, his whole body just shuts down right there on screen. And he almost kind of melts from the inside. It's very disturbing, disgusting, and no one knows what the heck is going on. So, it is now up to this man to figure it out. Now, he is not... Uh, he is not a hero to look up to, okay? He owes millions and millions of dollars for body modifications that he got and then couldn't afford. So he has these two Neanderthals, because in this book, Neanderthals have been revived and brought back. Uh, so these two Neanderthals are after him to reclaim the body parts that he can't pay for. Uh, he is in trouble not just with them, but uh, with one of the most powerful baseball uh, tycoons on the planet. And it is just a jumbled up crazy mess for this guy. He's not likable. He's not a good guy. He does a lot of terrible stuff. Um, 
and I loved this book. It was crazy and zany and I never knew what was going to happen next. Um, it ended up four and a half stars for me because I was not, I was not particularly pleased with the ending. The ending was a bit of a letdown for me in certain regards. But that said, um, it's great as a cyberpunk and just as a science fiction in general. Uh, there's some really horrific moments in there. Uh, if you like body horror, then this might be a really great science fiction for you because this thing is chock full of body horror. So, four and a half stars. It was awesome. And I really hope to read something else by Lincoln uh, if he has anything else out. If he doesn't, I will definitely be looking for it in the future. Three more books to go through, two of which my wife picked. First being Orson Scott Card's Lost Boys. And I've never read this. I was really looking forward to reading this. Um, I thought it was going to be kind of in the realm of boys' life. And it wasn't. Um, this is billed as a horror. And what's interesting is that uh, the vast majority of this novel is not horror whatsoever. And that's saying something because it is over 500 pages. Um, this, though, was a five-star read for me because I just enjoyed so many elements of this story. Um, I really enjoyed the characters. These parents are, like, the best parents ever. Not because they're great parents, but because they don't keep things from their kids. They're completely, wholeheartedly honest with them. Um, they treat them like people. But uh, they're so humorous that the main character, he's hilarious. I love the guy. I wish I could be more like him. Uh, I just, I love the characters in this book. I love the overall story, even though it really wasn't horror uh, until towards the very end. The book itself is just so enjoyable. And I'm telling you, that main character, he says all the things in life that we wish we could say to our bosses and to the people that we don't like around us. Uh, to the little bratty kid that comes up and says terrible things to you or your child, you know? Um, this guy, he's just no filter on him, man, and I loved it. Five stars for me. Awesome book. Um, I will say, it is Orson Scott Card, and in this book, he is not afraid to involve religion. So, if you have some sort of thing against incorporating religion in your novels, then uh, maybe it's not for you. That's my only little disclaimer there. The last book that I read that was not picked by my wife was offered to me uh, by the author in exchange for a review, which will be coming up very soon. That is Mike Thorne's next newest collection, Peel Back and See. Now, I'm not even going to tell you the rating that I've given this yet. Uh, I will just say that I will have my video up very soon for this particular collection. Uh, as you guys know, I did review his previous collection, Darkest Hours. That was a revamping of an older one of his, actually. This one is all new. Uh, and just stay tuned, stick around, and pretty soon you should see that review. Final book that I read in the month of September was my all-time favorite collection of poetry. That is Nicole Blackman with Blood Sugar. And that is the cool black men on the cover, actually. <clears throat> so, I know there are a lot of people that do not like poetry. Um, or at least, they don't think they like poetry because they won't give poetry a try. So, I'm just going to ask that uh, if you are at all in the tiniest bit interested in poetry, uh, even if it just needs to be darker poetry, perhaps, for you horror lovers out there, then this might be a really good option for you, because Nicole Blackman, she's immensely talented. Um, she goes for the throat in every single poem, and I just love the heck out of this collection. It is so, so good, guys. Five stars, easily. That is my favorite poetry collection that I own. And 
There you go. That was my rather lengthy September wrap-up. Um, as I said, it was supposed to be my wife picks my books for me. She picked about half of them, and those were the best half, really. So, uh, <laughs> that really says something, I guess. Um, I'm not going to have cat footage in this one, uh, but I'm going to have some very fun special cat footage in the next one for you to make up for it. So, I want to thank you all for joining me today. Um, I hope that you will try some of these books out. If you have any questions for me, of course let me know. I will gladly answer them. Uh, feel free to offer your own suggestions down below. This month, October, is going really well for me. I'm blowing through my TBR actually, so I'm going to be, I think, way ahead. I say that and then something's going to happen and I'm going to end up, you know, not finishing. But as of this moment, I'm way ahead. Uh, and I'm just enjoying every book that I pick up. So, as I said, thank you for joining me. I hope you have a wonderful day. I will see you all again very soon. Drink some awesome coffee. Cheers. Cheers.